Hello everyone, uh, this is a lecture for section 3.9, uh, a review of proof methods. All right, so we're going to look at a few methods where we can prove a certain statements or theorems. Um, so all theorems in math can be expressed in um, either of two forms. Uh, so the first form is uh, an implication. So if P then C. So if you have a set of premises then the conclusion follows from that, right? And the other way that you see theorem state, uh, stated is uh, the equivalence. So uh, it, C1 if and only if C2, right? So for the equivalence, you need to basically do two proofs to see that they work both ways. So uh, the implication that if C1, then C2, and the implication of C2, then C1. Uh, so sometimes um, like implication equivalents um, are not the same thing. Equivalent is like a stronger relationship between your premises and your conclusions that could go either way, right? So um, we're gonna start by looking at the implication theorems. And we're going to look at a sort of two basic ways of proving one is directly assume that the premises are true and prove that the conclusions are true. And the other way is indirectly or, or what's called by contradiction. So we assume P is true and the conclusion is false and we add that false negation of the conclusion to the premises and prove that this leads to a contradiction. So we kind of, we've seen these uh, direct and indirect proofs um, when we were doing the formal proofs a few sections ago. All right, so let's look at the first theorem or mathematical say, implication that we're going to prove. Here you go. We're asked to give a direct proof of the theorem. If n is an odd integer, then n squared is odd. All right, so uh, you can see that this is set up, state as an implication, right? This is my premise, and this is my conclusion. And basically, we're trying to show that if P, if we assume P is true, then C uh, needs to be true. Okay, so that's what we start with. So we have your premises. So that's kind of the direct proof is that we start with assuming that my premise is true, so n is a not integer. Okay, so at the beginning, sort of learning how to do proofs or uh, starting to use these proof methods, um, we work with integers a lot, even in not integers. So we've seen even an odd integers a little bit before, but because we're told that n is an odd integer, because this is true, I can write n as 2k plus 1. So this is a good way to express an odd integer. I could have said 2k minus 1 also, but 2k plus 1 is usually the standard way. And k is another integer. Okay, so k is an integer itself. Could be positive or negative, but if I write n as 2k plus 1, then I know that n is always odd because 2k is even, and if I add 1 to it, it's going to be odd. All right, so that kind of comes directly from my premises. All right, now I have to show something about n squared. I need to show that n squared is odd, so I'm going to work with n squared. Okay, so if n is 2k plus 1, n squared is going to be 2k plus 1 squared. All right, so now it's our task to show that this is odd. All right, so let's expand it out. That seems like a good idea. So I have 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Okay, so this is looking promising because I know an odd number will take this form, 2 times an integer plus this extra one at the end. So I can see that this really is in that form. If 
but I'm going to rewrite it. Let's say I have 2 and 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. All right. So the only thing we have to convince ourselves of or of reason is that this right here is an integer. m is an integer. All right, so let's see if that's uh, we can argue that. So um, we can say yes, m is an integer, like this expression from this is an integer because k is an integer, 2 times k is going to be an integer. If k is an integer, then k squared is an integer. You multiply by 2 is also an integer. And an integer plus an integer is also an integer. Okay, so because I'm only sort of working with this k, which is an integer, if I'm multiplying by something or I'm squaring it and I'm adding to another integer, then it's going to stay an integer. Okay, so because this is can be written as 2m plus 1, where m is an integer, then we can conclude that n squared, because n squared equals that, we can conclude that n squared is odd. All right, so that's the end of the proof. So starting with assuming that the premise is true, we need to arrive that this conclusion is also true. Okay, let's look at another problem. Okay, so the second example, give a direct proof of the theorem if m and n are both perfect squares, then the product nm is also a perfect square. Okay, so again, this is an implication. So these are my premises, and this here is my conclusion. So we're trying to show if p, then q, then c, sorry. So if, if I start with knowing that this statement is true, then show that this statement is true. Okay, so I start with my premises. So my premise is that m is a perfect square. And n is a perfect square. All right, so if m is a perfect square, that means I can write m as the product of an integer with itself. All right, I can write m as um, k squared. All right, or I can even say it's k times k. And so k is an integer here. All right, and if n is a perfect square, I can write that as something squared, integer squared. Make sure you don't use the same value, that don't use the same k. If you do, and so these are mis common mistakes I see in proofs, then you're now working with the most general case where m and n are a different number. You're going to work with special case where they're the same, and then you sort of you you're not proving the theorem for the whole universe that you're interested in. Okay, so let's say l squared or l times l. All right, so l is also an integer. All right, so I can write these because I'm starting with the true premises that m and m are perfect squares and I need to come up with some way to express uh, those statements. So that's, a, that's the way I, that's what I came up with. All right, now we go to try to figure out the conclusion. So in the conclusion, I want the product n times m. And I want to show that's a perfect square using this information as taken true. Okay, so we're going to plug in, right? So because n is a perfect square, then that's k times k. m is a perfect square, that's l times l. So I'm multiplying all these integers together. Because multiplication is associative, it means I can change the order around, I can move these around. So I'm going to rearrange them and say KL times KL. 
right? Because I this is an integer and this is another integer. Let's let's come up with another integer. So um, and I don't like p uh, t. T might be a bad one because right, so I have t times t. So this t is also an integer here. I'm multiplying two integers together, I get an integer, and then that's t squared. All right, so I can see that my product n times n can be written as an integer squared. So that means that n m is a perfect square. Right, so that concludes our proof. All right, okay. Okay, so um, now let's look at an indirect proof. So it says, give an indirect proof of the theorem if n is an integer and 2n plus 3n plus 2 is odd. So here's my first premise and my second premise, then n is odd. That's my conclusion. Okay, so in this case I have p1 is a premise and p2, and that implies my conclusion. Okay, so n is integer, 2n, 3n plus 2 is odd, then n is going to be odd. All right, so why an indirect proof? Okay, so an using an indirect proof when direct proofs are um, not as practical or they're messier, okay? So let me go through the indirect proof first and then try to do with the direct proof and kind of compare the two. All right, so for an indirect proof, so this is direct right here. So the direct proof, you're assuming your uh, premises are true and you're trying to see that that implies that the conclusion are, is true. For indirect, you're gonna take your premises as true. So P1 and P2 are true, but you're going to negate your conclusion and you're going to imply a contradiction. So somewhere along the way, you need a contradiction. All right, so let's let's do it. All right, so we know n is an integer. That's one premise. We know 3n plus 2 is odd. All right, that's my second premise. Now, because 3n plus 2 is odd, then it means that I can write this as 2k plus 1 where k is an integer. There we go. All right, and then my not c, now c says that n is, n is odd. So my not c premise means that n is even. Because I'm, what's the negation of n is odd is n is even. So I'm gonna write n as uh, 2l, where l is an integer. All right, so now I can need to see if these two facts contradict themselves. Okay, so I'm going to plug in n. So I'm going to plug in n is 2l into this thing here. All right, so I have 3 times 2l plus 2 is going to equal 6l plus 2. But we notice that this is even, right? Because this divides by two, that divides by two. I can write it as two times, multiply, three L plus one. This is an integer, right? Two times an integer, this is an even number. Okay? And this is my contradiction here, right? Because, Right. I started with saying that this was an odd number and an even number cannot equal an odd number, so that contradicts. Right. So if you get a contradiction, the indirect proof says that your assumption that you made that this is not true is incorrect. Okay, so this means that 
So it's incorrect that n is even. So n has to be odd. Right, so that's the format of an indirect proof. All right, let's see if we can do the same example with a direct proof. Okay, so with a direct proof, with the same example. Okay, so we know n is an integer, is a premise, 3n plus 2 is odd, so I can write it as 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. And from there, I'm trying to figure out with n is n is odd. All right, let's see. So this is doing a direct proof. Okay. Okay, so basically, I'm going to solve for n. Okay, so we have this is true from our premise, but we need to find something that has to do what's going on with n. Okay, so we're going to solve for it. So we have 3n is 2k minus 1. Divide this by 3, divide this by 3. And we're going to get n is 2 thirds k minus 1 third. All right, so what does this tell me? So this tells me we need this to tell us that um, n is an odd number, okay? But it's not clear from here that n is an odd number. I have fractions in there, okay? So we can try try something else. Okay. So we have 3n plus 2. Well, instead of saying it's 2k plus 1, Try figuring out an odd number that divides by 3, because that's what the problem is, okay? So let's say that this is 3k, and I'm going to make this plus, so it has to be, uh, let's see, I'm going to make it 6k, I don't know, not 3k, because I need this part to be even, okay? So 6k is even, and divides by 3, so that's good, and I need to make this number be odd, but when I subtract 2 from it, that needs to divide by 3. So let's make it 5. Now that would work. Okay. So is this an odd number? You kind of go, yeah, because 6k is even, and I'm adding an odd number to it, then this whole thing is going to be odd. Okay. So I'm kind of maneuvering it to kind of get me at the end right here where it's sort of more clear what what's happening okay so let's solve for n again so we have 3n equals 6k plus 3 and then divide everything by 3 and we get n equals 2k plus 1. yay that's a lot more useful than this one because clearly this is an odd number Okay, so we can end the proof there, okay? So why not just do a direct proof? The indirect proof was just a lot cleaner. Uh, it fell sort of together a lot better than trying to kind of figure out and guess and check what form I should give my odd number there to work out nicely at the end. So it's sometimes, Indirect proofs are just a bit cleaner, um, but but often with theorem you can also do a direct proof. It just often is uh, for people is preference. Okay.